Hi, I'm Lance Kupek and you're watching Refining the Process. Coming up, we'll take a look at the preparations that go into keeping the refinery running safely. Plus, what does Frontier do to keep our environment clean? There's a lot more than you think. Then we'll take a look at the organization that builds homes for our community here in Cheyenne. All that and more in this episode of Refining the Process. With the amount of activity going on at Frontier, how does our refinery prevent danger? The key is safety. Safety is important to protect the workers here at the refinery, but also the residents here in Cheyenne. Frontier takes many steps to ensure that if something doesn't go according to plan, it can be handled and corrected with no injuries or risk to our community. Refining oil involved large structures, complex systems, many people, and high heat and pressures. We were working with crude oil, gasoline, diesel fuel, um, propane. Uh, we work with these materials at uh, high pressures and high temperatures, uh, and we've got a lot of equipment that we have to keep track of as well. With so much going on, it is possible for something to go wrong, but at Frontier Refining, safety is a priority. Safety is probably the most important thing we have in the plant. With many different jobs, departments, and teams that are focused exclusively on keeping the facility running safely. I'm trying to make sure that uh, we take care of the people that are working inside the plant, uh, the contractors that we have through, uh, through the facility, as well as making sure that whatever happens inside the plant stays there and doesn't affect the surrounding community. Like most refineries, Hunter has its own fire station equipped to put out any fires to provide medical help confront hazardous chemicals and has a rescue team equipped to get people out. We've got a group of 42 volunteers from the plant who are part of our fire brigade and they train monthly uh, on both the equipment uh, from the fire brigade, uh, using the trucks, uh, use of the uh, rescue equipment uh, from the uh, lanyards and, and the uh, pulley systems for well, confined space entry rescue to the gear that they're wearing. Uh, the uh, fire retardant uh, bunker gear and, and whatnot. Also, we have a capability for delivering foam uh, onto any of the fires. Plus, the Frontier Fire Brigade and the local firefighters have experience working together in various community situations. The, the city of Cheyenne, their folks have come in and helped us out on occasion and we've been able to you know, help them out occasionally as well too. If they have, a, say, a truck that overturns uh, out on the interstate or around in town, we've been able to help out. In addition, there's a full-time nurse station at the facility. And he can respond to if we have a problem in the plant, to say somebody sprains a wrist or gets something in their eyes, we can flush that out. More often, it is preventing injuries before they become anything serious. So it's mainly here to help out with our hearing conservation programs, uh, help out with, uh, you know, even if we have to do some drug screening, uh, whatnot, with also uh, fit tests. A lot of the folks in, in the plant have to wear respirators uh, if we're working on certain parts of equipment to whatnot and so doing the testing to make sure that they're fit for those ones and also part of uh, developing a wellness program for us too so that we can have you know uh, people being healthy not only at work but how they're working at, at home and making sure that uh, they don't have any problems with that. Another team that is crucial to the facility running safely is the inspection team. Inspection is the guys who are going out and they're taking a look at to make sure that things are done properly. Making sure that the piping is, is correct and making sure that this is not uh, wearing out or thinning appropriately. Personnel carefully look over all equipment to make sure nothing could malfunction. If there is something that needs work maintenance, we'll repair the problem and the inspection team will look over it again to make sure the equipment is on top working condition. The inspection guys are the ones who come down to make sure that that weld is uh, done properly. They're the ones who will x-ray it, um, evaluate the x-rays, 
They will perform hydro tests on the pipes and hydro tests on the equipment in order to make sure that it is uh, tight and so it's not going to have any leaks or have any problems to it. And we have to have those checked and inspected on a frequency and those guys in the inspection department track that and we have to pull things out of service in order for us to uh, either replace those valves or check them and make sure that they're in good repair before we can continue. One system that is built into the facility is something most people see every day but may not understand. This is called the flare. What may look like just a fire is actually a planned safety device. When the facility's pressure becomes too high, the excess gases are released. We have relief valves which, you know, for the equipment, when it hits a certain pressure, it's designed for a certain pressure, and when it gets over that, uh, a valve will open and it'll dump the contents into the flare system. And to prevent these hazardous gases from affecting the atmosphere, the flare burns the chemicals away. A place for those to go to so they just don't go out to the atmosphere, they get combusted and burned so that they become, you know, non-hazardous for anybody else is, is around there. So when you see the flare in full flame, it is a safety system working to keep the facility under pressure and keep the air clean. It's a significant safety device for us. If for some reason a situation was to become serious enough, there is also a system that will warn residents that could be affected. You have different ways that you can notify the community, uh, and there's different programs that are out there for doing that. There's a reverse 911 system. Uh, we actually sponsor and pay 50% of a code red system, uh, which allows the, the folks in emergency notification to uh, take a look at different areas of, the, of the, the community and it will call out to them and, and they can deliver a message out to that area of the community. With this message, Frontier can warn the community even though this worst case scenario is highly unlikely. In my career here we've never had to do that and uh, I'm not looking that we should have to have that happen. So, I mean, we, we take all, all all sorts of precautions to try and prevent that, including if we have to shut process units down um, and delay our work in order to try and accommodate to where we can you know, do things safely and avoid that, we will do that. But despite all the teams, medical support, mechanical systems put in place, the most important aspect for ensuring safety is what happens on a daily basis. Uh, it takes everybody's focus and everybody's responsibility for, for tracking safety at the plant. It is the precautions every worker takes on a personal level that does the most to prevent something from happening. Because there's no way that, you know, a group of about a half dozen people can really maintain and watch that throughout the facility. And what you really want is safety to be a culture that everybody has when they show up at the plant. Here's what I'm going to do. If I see something going wrong, I'm going to stop. We're going to back up and we're going to fix what it is before we go forward again. Something that has to be part of your culture. It's just how you do things. It's like when you get in the car, you click your safety belt. Extensive training, procedures, individual awareness, and plain old habit is what has kept Frontier Refining producing for so many years without danger. Frontier feels that the safety of its employees and its own community is the most important thing. This facility processes a lot of flammable materials. Uh, so we've worked around and make sure that we don't have any problems with that. And if we do have an incident that comes up, we've got a group that's dedicated to make sure that we don't have anything that would impact uh, the community. And with the precautions that Frontier has taken, it will continue to be a responsible and safe facility into the future. Coming up, we'll look at the ways that Frontier Refining is working to keep our environment clean and healthy. Oil refining is more than just producing product. A key part of every oil refinery is keeping its environmental footprint as small as possible. Here at Frontier, we take our impact on the environment very seriously. The environment. It's our land. 
our air, our water, and our home. And at Frontier Oil, we are taking big steps to protect it. Millions of dollars have been spent to make sure our environmental footprint is as small as possible. It's important for Frontier to keep an eye on the environment for several reasons. Uh, basic reason of environmental compliance. There are a number of rules and regulations that we're required to comply with in order to operate this facility as good stewards of not only the regulations set forth, but to be good members of the community here at Cheyenne and in Wyoming. In oil refining, water is a key ingredient for many processes. Water purchased from the city is used in the cooling towers to cool products prior to storage. Along the way, the water can sometimes pick up contaminants such as oil and algae. It is our goal to reuse as much as possible, but sometimes the water must be replaced with fresh water. At our state-of-the-art wastewater treatment plant, we use oil-eating bacteria and rigorous testing to make sure the water we release back into the ecosystem is as clean as when it entered the refinery. Free-floating oil is first separated from the water before it goes into the air flotation units, where dissolved air is released into the water along with the coagulants to bring and train pollutants to the surface where they are skimmed off of the water. The water then is divided between two aerated biological treatment tanks where contaminant-eating bacteria are used to purify the water furthermore. After the water leaves the biological treatment tanks, it heads to the clarifiers where the bacteria are separated from the water. The final step in the purification process is filtration with sand and activated carbon. In the building that is adjacent to us is where we have the end of treatment filters, which actually clean up the water one more level. We go through sand filters and they go through carbon filters, and then we are able to actually discharge it to the creek. To ensure that the water being released is as clean as it should be, numerous water quality tests are done each week, and many parameters are continuously monitored by computer. The treatment process that we actually go through um, is much like the cities. Uh, we do the treatment so that we actually check it and do water samples on it. In addition to purifying water today, Frontier has also taken steps to prevent any future release of contaminants into the water from any potential accidents. We installed the barrier wall to actually keep all of the potential contaminants from the refinery out of the creek and so it's on our refinery proper boundary. In order to ensure that nothing is escaping the property, we've actually installed a number of monitoring wells along that barrier wall and we do sampling on those and various checks to make sure that there is no contaminants in that water. Besides making sure things are clean in the water, Frontier also routinely monitors air for odors. To keep the air clean, we have a lot of control technology on various units in the plant, which uh, control certain emissions based on the actual equipment that we're speaking of. We have a lot of NOx controls in the plant. That means a lot of the burners in our plant are actually ultra low NOx burners so that it's the EPA quality control. Occasionally, odors may be detected in the surrounding neighborhoods. Typically, these odors are not harmful. We do get complaints from time to time from the community. We actually encourage people to call the refinery at the main refinery number uh, and let us know as soon as you smell an odor. The sooner that we hear about it, the better. If it's the middle of the night, we are a 24-7 operation, so if it's the middle of the night, it's actually better if you call us in the middle of the night. Uh, and we'll come out and survey the area where the odor is and also do some surveys inside the plant, to try to locate the odor and, and uh, get it to stop. In addition to relying on help from the community on locating odors, Frontier Oil must abide by strict regulation from the EPA. It isn't just because we are doing our best to keep up with these standards. It is because at Frontier we care about our community. Well, we are members of the community here where we have impacts on the environment and we want to minimize those impacts and minimize our impacts on the community to be good neighbors. 
At Frontier, we are proud to be part of the community. We know how important it is to keep our land, air, and waterways clean so that our children and grandchildren have the same. That means that we are committed to taking care of our environment and the community for years to come. When we return, we will take a deeper look into one of our local community organizations. For many families in our area, it is difficult just to keep a roof overhead. But with the help of Habitat for Humanity, it is becoming much easier for these families to find a place to call home. What is home? What does it mean to you? It's protection for your loved ones makes me realize how blessed I am. It's a sense of security. More stable for her and more stable for all of us. And home is a neighborhood that welcomes you. It's just a community thing. I, I love helping other people. One organization that is dedicated to making a home for people is Habitat for Humanity. Habitat for Humanity helps low-income families into a home ownership position. For the past 20 years, Habitat for Humanity of Cheyenne has been helping construct houses for those who truly need it. We uh, raise the money to build homes for qualifying families that otherwise could not afford the um, opportunity for home ownership. It's a chance for needy families to build and purchase a home at an affordable cost. The houses are sold to the homeowners at cost, so that determines their mortgage. It's a zero interest mortgage. That determines their mortgage payment. And to keep that in the affordable range, we work with all of the Cheyenne area, uh, either as volunteers or as professionals, to get the best deal we can. We don't take back homes. We work with our homeowners. They, they remain in their home ownership position. Our first homeowner will pay off their mortgage this year. So they've been in their Habitat house 20 years, and in 2011 they'll make their last mortgage payment, and they still love their home. They're still so excited about the opportunity. It benefits children with a stable place to grow up. My daughter, she's a special needs child, so I mean, she's kind of a girl that's stuck on routine and having somewhere where it's her own house, her own room, is gonna be better for her. Plus, Home ownership has been proven to help the community in other ways. Home ownership encourages all kinds of wonderful things. It allows people the opportunity to safely raise their children. Children of homeowners do better in school. They're more socially aware. They learn giving back to the community because they have participated in the Habitat for Humanity process. Um, they come back and volunteer with us after they're into their own homes to help other people. And Habitat for Humanity only exists because of the generosity of its volunteers. And in a small community like Cheyenne, you know, 50,000 plus people, um, everybody knows everybody, everybody, um, you know, we're all neighbors and friends. We meet in the grocery store, we have our church organizations and our civic organizations, and, and it's a very, very giving community. We never, uh, we're always looking for more volunteers, but we're very fortunate. But Habitat for Humanity also depends on the donation of money, time, and supplies of all kinds. And it is in all these ways that Frontier is giving back to those in need. 
Frontier Oil has partnered with the, our Habitat affiliate in Cheyenne for more than 18 years. And they provide a variety of things, including bringing out a cherry picker to set the roof trusses. They have also participated in a blitz build where we put up a home from the subfloor to occupancy in eight days and Frontier rallied all of their employees to come out and participate in the process and that was that was fun. They have never said no. <laughs> Every time we've called um, whatever it is we need. And one unique way Frontier has contributed is by donating a product that is produced at the refinery that builds a street to a new life. We're currently finishing our Cottonwood Meadow infrastructure project and um, Frontier Oil is providing all of the materials needed to pave the roads of Hope Court in the Habitat for Humanity subdivision. And it is the generosity and hard work of the community and its businesses, like Frontier, that helps Habitat for Humanity continue to give needy families a chance to find home. My experience always with Frontier Refining is that they are one of the most giving organizations, one of the most giving companies in our Cheyenne community, and they help so many organizations, um, including Habitat for Humanity. They give a lot back to this community. Home. It's more than a building. It's security that has meaning. To have um, my kids to have a place where they can call home. It's about giving the future a chance. If you have a little bit more than somebody else, or if you have an opportunity um, to help other people, I think that our planet is just a better place. And it's about a neighborhood helping each other. It's a great opportunity for the community to come together and, and to uh, build a house for somebody that's, you know, that, that needs to build their, or that can't afford it for themselves. And for Frontier Refining, it is another way to give back and build hope. Whether it is the safety of our people and our community, our green efforts, or our very humanity, we here at Frontier are focused on protecting and investing in more than just oil. For more information, visit us at FrontierOil.com. I'm Lance Kupek, and thanks for joining us.